morning, scientists. I hope you're still ready as I am for today's adventure. Welcome to Science 4, where learning becomes easy once we explore. So hang on tight, for we will answer your what, why, and how questions. Let us discover the beauty of the world together. For in the great minds of young scientists like you, learning never stops. Take you where your imagination will allow you to go. This is your science teacher, teacher maybe. Come and join me in our short yet exciting science adventure. For today's adventure, we will once again explore and examine some of the materials that can be found in our environment and discover another set of special properties of matter. Reminder, please prepare your self-learning module, paper, and pen. These things are important for we will be using them as we continue to discover everything about matter. In today's episode, we will classify materials according to their ability to float or sink in water and undergo decay. Have you tried swimming in the sea or in a pool with your family? How was your experience? Did you make sure that you're safe from drowning while enjoying swimming? Aside from knowing how to swim, what material did you use to make sure that you're safe from drowning? Swimming is an enjoyable leisure hobby, and sport. But we also need to make sure that we are safe from drowning every time we go for a swim. For safety purposes, people use floaters, commonly called salbabida in Tagalog, whether they swim in the sea, pool, river, or lakes. What special property do floaters have? They have the ability to float. What about those materials like ship anchors that don't float on water? What special property do they have? They have the ability to sink. The materials around us have their own special properties. There are also other materials that can undergo decay due to the presence of water or moisture in the materials, and this can cause degradation because of the decomposing organisms. But before we move on to our science lesson today, let us first recall yesterday's episode on the special property of matter, which is the ability to absorb water. To help us recall our previous lesson, let us call in our friend, Tech Machino. Can you help me find Tech Machino? Tech Machino! Tech Machino! Hello there, Tech Machino! Can you show them what happened in yesterday's lesson? Great! Let's go! Matter is everything around us. It has mass and takes up space. The three forms of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. For today's lesson, we have ventured on one special property of matter called porosity. Porosity is a property of a material to absorb liquid like water. Cloth has a special property of porosity. It can absorb liquids. Porous materials have many holes called pores where liquid can be quickly absorbed. A cotton ball is an example of a porous material. Non-porous materials have no holes through which liquid can be absorbed. They cannot absorb water. 
a spoon has no holes, it is an example of a non-porous material. It cannot absorb water. Thank you, Tech Machino. That was awesome. Till next time. Bye. So yesterday, we had ventured on one special property of matter, which is the ability to absorb liquid. You had learned that this property is called porosity and that cloth, tissue, and sponges are some of the materials that can absorb liquid because of the lots of pores or holes between the loose fibers that make up these materials. What do you call the materials that have pores and have the ability to absorb liquid? They are called porous materials. What about those materials that do not have pores and cannot absorb liquid? What do you call them? They are called non-porous materials like the materials that are made of plastic. In this lesson, you will be learning more about matter by discovering more special properties of different materials. You will also learn how to classify the materials based on their ability to float or sink in water and undergo decay. Just like floaters, which are used for safety when swimming, there are also other materials that have the ability to float. Float means to stay on top. There are also materials like a ship's anchor which sinks. Sink means to fall to the bottom of the water. Trivia! The words float and sink in the English language are antonyms. When you say antonyms, these words have opposite meanings. This time, let us examine the pictures and classify them if they float or sink in water. If you place all these materials in water, which materials will have the ability to float or sink in water? Will the noodle cup float once we place it in water? Yes, it will float. The noodle cup will stay on top or stay on the water surface. Will a ship usually float once it is at sea? Yes, it will float. Built ships are made to float at sea for transportation of travelers and cargoes. Will the metal bell float once we place it in water? No, the metal bell will sink. The metal bell will fall to the bottom of the water. If you got all of the right answers, then you deserve your first star. Some materials float in water like the noodle cup and ship. When we say float, the material stays on top or on the surface of the water. Some materials sink, like the metal bell. When we say sink, the material falls to the bottom of the water. Trivia! Titanic, one of the famous ships in the world, was split into two and sank at the Atlantic in 1912 after hitting an iceberg. A famous movie with the same title as the ship was filmed out of the tragedy. In Science 4, there's always time to explore. So make sure you're ready because it's... Activity time! Young scientists, this time we will be exploring different materials and classifying whether they have the ability to float or sink in water. 
prepare your pen and paper. For this activity, we will be using these materials, namely a small basin that is three-fourths full with water, an empty plastic bottle with a cover, a feather, large stones, rubber ball, and metal spoon. I will be soaking each material into the water. Classify whether the material has the ability to float or sink in water. Are you ready? Thumbs up if you are ready! Great! Our first material is an empty plastic bottle with cover. If you have answered float, you are correct. An empty plastic bottle with a cover stays on top of the water or at the water surface. Our second material is a feather. If you have answered float, you are correct. A feather stays on top of the water or at the water surface. Our third material are large stones. If you have answered sink, you are correct. Large stones fall to the bottom of the water. Our fourth material is a rubber ball. If you have answered float, you are correct. Rubber ball stays on top of the water or on the water surface. Our fifth material is a metal spoon. If you have answered sink, you are correct. A metal spoon falls to the bottom of the water. If you got four correct answers out of five, then you deserve your second star. Sink means to fall to the bottom of the water, while float means to stay on top. Some materials float on top of the water, some material stays submerged partway down, and some materials sink. Some materials sink very fast, some materials sink very slowly. An object's shape can affect its ability to float, but some materials float no matter what their shapes are, such as styrofoam and balsa wood. Some things float at first, but then sink as they absorb water or take water in through holes. But why do some materials sink while some other materials float? The ability of materials to sink or float in water depends on their density. Density is the amount of mass of an object per volume. Water has a density of 1 gram per cubic centimeter. If the density of an object is higher than the density of water, that object will sink in water. But if the density of the object is less than the density of water, the object will float in water. Different materials have different densities. For example, gold will sink in water because its density of 19.3 gram per cubic centimeter is higher than the density of water which is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Some materials have another special property. They can undergo decay. 
What happens to the materials once they undergo decay? Decay means to be slowly destroyed into bits in the presence of water, air, and soil, and due to the presence of decomposing organisms. Not all plants and animals decay at the same time. Some are compressed under water and thick layers of soil over millions of years. They are converted into fossil fuels such as coals, oil, or natural gas. These fuels are used by power stations, factories, motor vehicles, and others. The organic matter in soil is derived from plants and animals. It becomes organic fertilizer. Organic fertilizer from compost pit does not harm the soil. It actually enriches it. Some factors that contribute to the decaying process of the materials are sunlight, water, soil, and the action of microorganisms. Leftover food is kept in refrigerators to avoid or delay spoilage since decomposing organisms that break down food do not grow quickly in cold temperatures. Decaying materials may help in the process of enriching the soil, thus fertilizing the plants, but it may also cause harm to our health if we are directly exposed to these wastes. We may experience some common ailments such as allergies, cholera, malaria, typhoid, dysentery, and some other skin diseases such as ringworms and scabies. Safety is our first priority. That is why we need to throw our wastes properly and by not mixing decaying or biodegradable materials with non-decaying or non-biodegradable materials. Decaying materials can be helpful once it is properly disposed of. Making compost pit is one way of disposing decaying materials properly. Classify the following materials inside the box, whether they will decay or not. You are given one minute for this activity. Let's check which materials will undergo decay. Now, let's check which materials will not decay. If you have classified all the materials correctly, you deserve your third and last star. Different materials have different properties. Some materials float. Float means to stay on top. There are other materials that tend to stay on top or on the water surface when you place them in water. Some materials stay submerged partway down. There are also materials which sink. Sink means to fall to the bottom of the water. The ability of materials to sink or float in water depends on their density. Density is the amount of mass of an object per volume. Water has a density of 1 gram per cubic centimeter. If the density of an object is higher than the density of water, that object will sink. 
But if the density of the object is less than the density of water, that object will float in water. Some materials found in our environment can undergo decay or be slowly destroyed into bits due to the presence of water, air and soil, and due to the presence of decomposing organisms. That's all for today, young scientists! I hope you had fun in Science 4, where learning becomes easy once we explore. I hope we had answered your what, why, and how questions. For in the great minds of young scientists like you, learning never stops. Follow where your imagination allows you to go. This is your science teacher, teacher maybe. Thank you for joining me in our short yet exciting science adventure. Watch out for another episode in science next Friday and Saturday only here on DevEd TV.